kind of uh, introduce you to the genre. Uh, there's environmental art, and, and that is uh, art in the built environment. And, and under that umbrella is ecological art, uh, which I consider, uh, uh, if, it's, if it has a, a biological name, e ecology, it has some form of measurement or some interaction with the uh, uh, with the ecology or the biology of, uh, say, a watershed, in my uh, case. So I'm going to introduce you to um, uh, my work. And uh, uh, I really appreciate the way the uh, curators uh, put this basket up there. It's, it's one of my signature pieces that I use a lot in watersheds. Um, I uh, come up with this kind of it's like a fish basket or an indigenous um, uh, shape of, of form that um, uh, you might see in an old uh, ancient uh, fishing magazine or uh, fishing uh, uh, tool for catching fish or something, but it's, it's, it's because it's a rudimentary uh, construction uh, and it's made from indigenous materials in the riparian corridors where I work. So, uh, so I use this and it's simple to make and uh, I work a lot with young people uh, on making simple things that uh, when they're filled with uh, material and staked in with uh, uh, willow stakes, they reestablish vegetation. So uh, this form, this shape right here, I use a lot. And as we kind of walk through the uh, exhibit, I'll, uh, I'll show you how that form works and then we'll, uh, we'll move on to, uh, to some really cool things that I'm really proud of. But before I do that, let me uh, let me run this experiment here. Uh, I just want to. This is a. Uh, this has uh, uh, silt particles and uh, and various uh, soil particles in in it uh, with water. And so uh, I work a lot on, on, on watersheds. The watershed. We all live on a watershed. Uh, and so. Uh, so this is soil from several watersheds around the area. Some of the uh, particles are heavier. And uh, what I'm, why this experiment is here is to, uh, you can see some of the, the, the water getting clearer when it's not moving, when it's not shaking. And that's how these works work. They slow water down in the watershed and allow the uh, water to matriculate into the groundwater and recharge the aquifers. At the same time, what it, what it does is what this test tube does. The silt settles when the water is slowed down. So these structures, uh, uh, like this right here, you, you can see the water may come down into this like ravine right here, it's slowed down, and the silt particles are allowed to settle just like they are in this test tube right here that you can see. So uh, that's kind of the, the ecological principle behind uh, the uh, ecological design of these structures. They're designed to be biodegradable and to reestablish vegetation. The uh, stakes that stake these together are um, uh, material that will reestablish itself, like willow is a really good one, sycamore. And so whatever is indigenous in the, uh, uh, in the, in the watershed that I'm working on is what I used to stake it with. Uh, that the reasoning behind that is that will reestablish vegetation in a root system that will stabilize that and, and, and catch the debris and the small um, fibers that are washed down in this watershed and make its own natural check dam. So, uh, so, so as a whole on a watershed, these structures are strategically placed in places where there's there might be overgrazing, and so the water speeds up a little bit. And these allow it to strategic, strategic places to uh, to let it slow down, and keep the silt particles up in the upper part of the watershed, and keep them from going into the into the main stream. The reason the reason for that is to keep the silt out of the sp historic spawning grounds, and uh, keep from silting up the uh, the eggs so that they're allowed to hatch. So it's a watershed restoration idea that it might be applied a half a mile away from the stream, but it has this direct or indirect effect on the stream. So, uh, so this kind of art is um, 
it's uh, it's under the umbrella of environmental art because it's in the it's in the environment and it and it, and it is a man-made object, but um, it uses ecological uh, restoration principles to um, to give it its form and and, and that is basically basically the form determinant. The uh, underlying principle behind it is that the presence of a man-made object is no longer felt as the restoration process is established. So as vegetation gets reestablished, as this, as this structure absorbs silt and, um, and, and, and particles and slows water down, allows it to, to matriculate to the groundwater and get into the stream through the groundwater instead of over the ground carrying silt particles, the, the presence of a man-made object it becomes less and less. So it's a little different than object-making art, um, but it's still kind of there are objects to communicate the idea because um, uh, uh, if it's a half a mile in from a from a stream or a or a highway, it doesn't get a lot of visibility. Maybe uh, a lot of them that I do in public parks. They do get visibility, but my funders always want to walk out and see these ones that are out there. But by the time they get there, two or three years later, um, there's no evidence of a man-made object. So, uh, so it, it poses a question of um, what kind of art is this that you can't see after a couple of years?